my lovely, lovely, lovely imps. Today, we have to revisit a topic that I talked about just a little bit ago on stream. And unfortunately, uh, it's gone exactly like I predicted in my previous video. Some of you may have seen this video. It's right here. It's called Anna Kasparian doubles down on transphobia. And uh, I'm rather proud of that video because it's a video where I basically go through line by line and in as good faith as possible, uh, contest and argue against the frankly rather embarrassing arguments that a certain major leftist, I should say leftist, uh, 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 news professional named Anna Kasparian has been talking about. Now, while my video was titled Anna Kasparian doubles down on, uh, 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 doubles down on transphobia, um, it's actually kind of funny because it's not just transphobia that she was doubling down on. She's actually doubling down on being dead wrong about a fairly basic abortion rights uh, take as well. Now, uh, uh, all of this stems originally from a tweet and then a video segment and now a series of video segments and tweets in which Anna Kasparian uh, basically gets very, very angry about a series of inclusive terms that are used exclusively or nearly exclusively in the context of legislation and medicine. Those terms are birthing person, person who menstruates, uh, person with a uterus. These are phrases that are used to be more accurate when it is important to be accurate about a specific biological trait. And I want to make sure that everybody's on the same playing field. So I'm going to repeat some of the things I said in the last video. For example, there are women who do not have a uterus. There are females who do not have a uterus because they've had a hysterectomy. There are men who do have a uterus. There are non-binary people who do have a uterus. There are non-binary people and there are men who are able to get pregnant because they are trans men or they are non-binary uh, and uh, were born with a uterus. There is a large group of people who do not identify as women who do actually have a uterus. And those people need to be included when you are talking about law and medicine or else you are actually putting those people in danger. For example, imagine if there is a non-binary person who has a uterus, uh, but you pass a law that states that only women have a right uh, to reproductive health care in your state. Well, you have just passed a law that does not guarantee the rights of that non-binary person with a uterus. If you pass a law that says that women are allowed to have access to an abortion, but it does not have inclusive language that includes uh, trans men and non-binary people, you are excluding those people from the right to have an abortion. And furthermore, on the uh, dangerous spectrum of things, there are lots of people who are not medical experts. Trans people are not all medical experts, as it turns out. And if you do not use inclusive language, there are people who might not know that they need a specific type of health care. So, for example, if you wrote a pamphlet that said uh, women need to come in for a, uh, a, you, a, a cervical exam every once in a while, uh, and somebody who was not super medically knowledgeable and identified and lived their daily lives as a man did not know that they needed to go in for that, they might think, well, you know, I'm on testosterone. Maybe I don't need that anymore. But unfortunately, they might actually need that. They might actually need those exams to maintain their health. 
So I just wanted to make sure I laid this out to begin with so that everybody's on the same page about how easy to understand the argument for inclusive language in medical and legal settings is. It's a very simple argument. Now, Anna Kasparian, who I might remind you, is the co uh, the the co-owner and co uh, uh, producer and co-host of one of the largest liberal uh, slash leftist uh, news sources in America, the Young Turks. The Young Turks is absolutely massive. It has been buoyed by an incredible amount of on the ground support from liberals and leftists alike who find who have found their reporting over the years as uh, left and liberal advocates to be very valuable. Uh, a absolutely massive platform. And also that Anna presents herself as a professional uh, news source, as somebody who discusses the news, uh, unlike myself, where I am but a humble entertainer who shares her opinions on politics. I talk about my opinions all the time, uh, uh, but I am ultimately an entertainer. I talk about goofy things. I make funny noises. I have little you know, bazingas and, well, when my soundboard works, my soundboard's been on the fritz tonight, but when it works, you know, you come to my stream and you hear all kinds of things like, you know, you'll hear like the, you know, that, wow, it really isn't working, huh? Wow, it's totally busted Oh my tonight. God. Bazinga. There we go. There you go. Now it's working. I had to re I had to kick the B thing to get it going. Bazinga. You come in and you get to hear funny noises. I make jokes. I talk about, and I, I do pride myself on my, on my political opinions, and I try to make sure that they are well evidenced and well supported. But I don't present myself as some kind of like a news figure, but Anna Kasparian does. And Anna Kasparian has been very, very angry uh, lately about this whole birthing person thing. Now, in my last stream talking about this, I pointed out that Anna Kasparian has not talked about trans people uh, on Twitter to any meaningful extent for nearly two years until going on a sort of tirade against inclusive language. Um, and I find that very weird. I find it very weird to be like, you can support trans rights without dehumanizing me. Um, which is what she originally said. Her The core of her argument was that and accepting that there is any circumstance in which these inclusive terms are used uh, is somehow dehumanizing to her. And she also repeatedly used the terminology biological woman. Um, and it was very weird. She was getting very mad in the comments. She had an absolute ocean of people, of people who were her friends and supporters who came out in incredibly good faith and explained their position, explained what she was getting wrong. But more so, it was just very odd because in addition to, uh, uh, in addition to just, uh, completely and utterly bungling the argument and getting really, really, really angry at a lot of people who are correcting her basics, um, it also contradicts what she said before. Um, let me play you a clip. And this clip was located and propagated by somebody who we're going to talk about a little more. Olayemi Oluren. I believe I'm pronouncing her name correctly. Um, we're gonna to get to her in a second, but I just wanted to give credit for finding this clip. Let me just play this clip for you real quick, okay? Let's play it. It's bad faith. They know, they know there's a difference between gender and sex. They know that it is very possible for someone to be born a biological male or, or biological female, but in terms of gender identify differently as a male or non-binary, but they still have the biological capacity, the physical capacity to get pregnant. Mm -hmm. So that's why the language, the rhetoric is inclusive to include those people. It is not a big deal, but they make it a big deal. They manufacture it into a big deal because that's all Republicans are. That's all they have, this is all they do. Endless bad faith arguments meant to fear monger and direct hatred and fear toward other Americans, typically powerless Americans, because well, it's bad faith. Now, 
This was a rant from some time ago uh, in which she presents the dead opposite opinion uh, that she has been sort of dumping into social media and onto her show recently um, and also shows that she actually does know the argument that everybody was taking all of the time in the comments to, to explain to her. She made just here the exact argument literally on the same topic that other people were then explaining to her and her argument back then was that this is republican nonsense and yet for the last two weeks she has been angry and saying that everyone is out to get her and that they are wrong to call her uh that she's playing into the hands of republicans when she herself was the one who made that exact argument on her show in the past and now when she says something very very foolish in public and has been uh has received some pushback on it is getting a bit mad i just thought it was very very interesting to play this clip because it just shows that she really really doesn't know what she's talking about here and that this has all been mad cope i want to show you how what prompted this particular segment that we're doing today and if if i apologize that there had to be some wind up but i want to make sure that i'm engaging with this in good faith and explaining the subject in full to people who might be coming to this that are new to the issue or that might not be super familiar so let me get to the bottom here okay so here we go Just now on the timeline, I scroll in and I see some girl try to compare Angel Reese to Sid from Ice Age. And that's when I really realized, babe, y'all are some fucking haters, babe. Like, babe, I tell, listen, haters. If I don't tell you nothing else but fucking people, they are haters, babe. Like, if you spend time on the internet, you will know that the app out there going to hell. Yes, yes, sir, Bob. Yes, sir, Bob. Going to hell, okay? Let me tell y'all something. The express train straight to hell gonna be booked. It's going to be late. It's going to be late because they're gonna get stopped and stalled because of the traffic. Because of the traffic. It's gonna be slam packed, booked to hell. Hell. Just now. Okay, so the clip that we have just watched is Olayemi Oluren a uh, content creator uh, on multiple platforms who was talking about people being really mean about another uh, 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 influencer's physical appearance. And you might go, well, what does this have to do with anything that we're talking about? What does this have to do with birthing people? What does this have to do with Anna Kasparian? And that's a very, very good question. O Olemi? Olemi? Okay, thank you for for correcting my pronunciation. As you all know, I constantly get pronunciation incorrect, and I'm very sorry about that, okay? Uh, let's take a look in here. Let me show you exactly how Anna Kasparian gets involved here. Anti-hater. Oh, Olay, do you mean people who demand people cook their friends? Those kind of haters? And then Olemi Ole Ole says, question mark? And Anna Kasparian replies with a clip, with this clip here. And we're going to watch this clip together, okay? Here we go. Let's watch this clip. Because this does kind of seem like it came out of nowhere, right? Let's see. And you should be able to, to Very... mention those without, like, having to classify it as, you know, but you shouldn't get mad at her for this because of her history. By the way, talk about a loaded panel here. There are some, this is a loaded panel. I don't know everybody here, but Illuminati, we've, we've reacted to Illuminati. I've done a show with Mike. David Dole is, is, of course, very well known in Lefty Spaces. Matt Bender, of course, also very well known. Uh, Lance, I've done a ton of content with Lance. I've never uh, had the pleasure of doing content with Olay, but uh, I'm certainly open to it. I do not know Kenny. Um, but what a stacked panel here. Anyway, let's continue. No, I, I mean, no one's mad at her for her history. I think it makes sense if you want her to change her mind. 
and to understand what she did wrong. Because if it's just, if without that context, like I again, that's why it's important if you know her that you do include that context. Because it's, she has to understand that these these disagreements are coming from an honest place, and we're not just doing it for clicks, right? Like that, that's so. No, of course, that, but that's, that's not the that's same. Not that's not the same, though. That's not I the have same. To say, I have to say it. Oh my god, I have to say it. I like Anna, but I feel a little bit like this is the coddle the white lady hour. Um, and, and and you know why? And you know why? I thought this even earlier because before this, the majority report put out a thing too, and everybody else. And I was like, boy, everybody sure feels the need to trip over their fucking feet to come out to defend her for getting cooked when all of the people get cooked all the time. Nobody five. I have I have yet to watch a video of anybody defending me from getting fucking cooked. I've never <laughs> seen it. I've never seen everybody come out. She has a lot of fucking bad takes, and then she gets cooked because she comes out right. unprovoked. She acts to be cooked. She got up today and she said, twit. Which, by the way, uh, based, based lay here, uh, she's right. We, we covered this in my last video that it came out of nowhere. Anna had not talked about trans people. No one called her a birthing person to our knowledge. If it happened, it happened off. It happened somewhere in private where she should have handled it with that random person. She literally came out of nowhere with a take that she knows is wrong as we now see from her previous uh, advocacy online. Let's continue. Delete the tweet. I want to make it clear. She has yet to delete the fucking tweet. She Wait, she hasn't has deleted it. Her. Race, so you know why? Because at the end of the day, she Ooh. took the one hundred and six thousand like tweet. She said she didn't even get race shield. She didn't even get race shield. She'll be all right. All right. She didn't get race like, like, oh my god. I, 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 I saw. I, 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 I saw that majority report video that went up. It's exactly what Emma said on the show earlier today. And when I heard Emma say it, I was like, you know, Emma put it great. And then I saw them put it up with the title that says Anna Kasparian is not anti-trans. I'm like, that's not the point. Why are you putting that as the yeah, title of the not, video? Is... Remember, we watched that in the last segment. We, I pointed out how basically every major figure that responded to Anna Kasparian, who for the record, has one of the biggest news platforms on the entire left. Uh, while, yes, it is indeed true that there are liberal figures who are larger, like solidly liberal figures who are larger than Anna Kasparian, on the left side of things, she is one of the biggest channels, massive amount of money, a, a hugely profitable venture. Let's not talk about the union things. Let's not get into that. Anna Kasparian is remarkably successful, has a huge platform, came out of nowhere to dump crap on a point that she already, she, she misrepresented the point. She didn't make a good argument. She got mildly roasted on Twitter and most of the professional people in this space were incredibly kind to her, like remarkably soft, and she's still angry about it. And we're gonna see just how bad it goes because of course, this is just the wind up. The I point. She's, she's this is where the, and the concern. It was an anti-trans take. The substance <laughs> of the viewpoint she is legitimized. You see what I'm saying? The conversation has just shifted to defend. Like everybody's conversation is about defending whether or not Anna is um um a turf in her career and blah blah blah, rather than talking about the substance of what she put out and why that is um offensive to legitimize and why it's a problem for and being held responsible for it. Thank like, you. Like That's normalize, the normalize large creators being called out and uh, being like, "Oh shit, I was wrong." Like, you and you so that's pretty. That's a pretty straightforward clip. Okay, so let's review where we are so far. Unrelated tweet to Anna Kasparian. Anna Kasparian comes in out of nowhere, and is like, "Oh, you're being a hypocrite," and then she posts this video in which, let me just be clear. No one was mean to her, not even a little. The meanest thing, all of these people were tripping over themselves to state that they don't think Anna Kasparian is bad. Olay even said that she doesn't even dislike Anna, but that she thinks that Anna is dead wrong. Just holy shit. The level of, 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 of kindness and calmness, which was being, uh, which was being used here is, it's like next level. And she still used this as an example, apparently, of Olay being a, a hater. Mistress Lynn says Vosh referred to her as R-worded. Um, 
but that's Vosh. That's somebody completely different than any of the people here. That's none of these people. Let's continue. Olay responds uh, by saying, you made transphobic statements and we spent an hour of the show defending you from allegations of being a turf rather than addressing the substantive problems with your comment. I said it felt like they were coddling you and I stand by that. If you think that makes me a hater, knock yourself out, Miss Mamas. And let me just say this. For people who've been particularly kind, uh, for people uh, for people who I've been particularly kind to on the timeline, when y'all are being rightfully dragged and when I was personally disrespected on your show, it's truly wild that you would try to come for me on the timeline when everyone dragged you for your transphobic comments. And then Anna's response to this is one of the most childish things I've seen. LOL! The meltdowns over wanting to be referred to as a woman rather than a birthing person is pretty wild. I'll never apologize for that, especially as a biological woman who has had a lifetime of being told that I'm less than. I'm a woman. No apologies. Now, a whole lot of stuff unfolded from here, okay? Uh, both... Both... Uh, Anna Kasparian and Cenk, Jink, I always say his name wrong, and Jenk, uh, basically went into damage control mode. Um, and I'm talking like the cringiest damage control mode that you can possibly imagine, okay? So before we even get into the clip, because there's a clip, we got, I want to show you what was, what was being said on Twitter, Okay. And I'll show you, by the way, more examples of other people in this space being very gentle and very kind with Jenk and Anna, who have both behaved um, basically like gigantic babies for this entire saga. Uh, Anna, of course, coming out of nowhere with a take that nobody asked for, contradicting her own opinions in the past, only to basically be like, well, I'm getting canceled. Let's just, let's just look at the Twitter stuff and then we'll see the pathetic on video stuff, okay? Take a look. Jake comes in saying, left wing extremists help right wing so much. 66% of this country is left wing according to polling on policy issues. They don't believe in defunding the police or being called Latinx or calling women birthing people or abolishing prisons. Anyone who claims they do is lying. Now, of course, many of you might point out that this is a fucking stupid argument that doesn't even talk, it, it literally just, it, it's instrumentalizing a completely different discussion to basically do uh, neoliberal propaganda. Uh, talking about how, uh, how left-wing extremists are bad, the liberals are the ones who are right, is of course par for the course for Cenk. Cenk is a status quo uh, neoliberal type. He doesn't want anybody to believe that, but let's be real. He's a union buster. He's conservative on most of these social issues that actually are very important to a lot of people. And this tweet basically shows that. This tweet is utilizing the conversation that's being had around this to to try and shit on prison abolition, uh, to try and shit on inclusive language, which he doesn't exactly portray, he doesn't exactly represent accurately, and then also defunding the police. He's literally, yes, people in chat are saying he's trying to reach the South Park centrists. Uh, it's kind of ironic to frame 66% of the country as left wing while then shitting on d uh, a deeply left wing positions. Let me point out to you that some of the most notable and respected left wing advocates were themselves prison ab abolitionists, ones that I'm sure Anna and Jenk have utilized in their coverage many, many times. But let's continue. And I, I, I said that I wanted to show you some of the responses to this. So I wanted to show you here, Emma Vigland. 
Emma Viglin says, isn't your point here contradictory? If that number is correct, that means that any aversion to inclusive language is marginal compared to the policy sets. Democrats have been doing well electorally as well. Nobody is making vote voting decisions based on uh, clumsy activist or medical language. What helps the right here is ceding ground to them and not being proactive in reframing the debate around these phrases, which people have to do, uh, which we have to do on behalf of this country's most marginalized groups. If people prefer inclusive language, shouldn't we listen and make the case for them? Uh, which, yeah, that would be the conclusion. But of course, uh, Jenk doesn't care. Um, he doesn't care at all. Um, and of course, he continues um, to, 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 to sort of double down on this. Unlike gay marriage, none of these are morally correct position. There's a reason why 99% of Americans don't want to abolish prisons because it makes no sense and leads to tremendous injustice. I'm not going to uh, I'm not going to back nonsensical positions because of because 12 people on Twitter uh, pretend to represent the left and claim no one is allowed to disagree. Now, I I I just want to point out he says that it's 12 people on Twitter, but Jenk and Anna have been triggered for over two weeks. So apparently those 12 people on Twitter are seriously living in their mind rent free. It's kind of funny. It kind of reminds me of the times when uh, conservatives claim that they don't give a shit about 12 people on Twitter and yet they endlessly wheedle and whine about cancel culture as if those 12 people on Twitter are literally the only thing that matters in the world to them. Which one is it? Is it a bunch of random people on Twitter that don't matter or is it another for you to hijack large portions of your show and also your public messaging from your official accounts which have hundreds of thousands of followers it's really interesting right it's funny but of course it doesn't end here not even close in fact i mean actually uh he's been pretty mad about this um the repeated emphasis and reaction, here we go. Here's here's more of what uh, Emma Viglin said. Oh yeah, here we go. Sorry, this is, this is all over the place. Um, here we go. Emma, I see leftists using this language outside of clinical context all the time. This new excuse is that no one was using it anyway is bullshit, but I'm happy about it. If everyone wants to retire these terms to just clinical context, great, I agree. I get, and then Emma responds and says, I guess the question is, why the repeated emphasis on this, especially with no examples of any negative electoral fallout? Why do leftists have to bend the language to appease the right? Hasn't the TYT mantra always been about fighting and beating the right into submission, metaphorically? Now keep in mind, Emma Viglin used to work at TYT. So Emma Viglin doesn't have no skin in the game. Emma Viglin's face is associated with TYT. And then Chenk says, we didn't re repeatedly emphasize anything. Anna posted the most innocuous tweet of all time. We know that's not true, which, sh which now a lot of you are saying was perfectly normal. Then leftists lost their shit and started saying it was an attack against trans people. There's absolutely no question about who started this and made an enormous deal out of it. Ex you're right, you're right, Jenk. It was Anna, literally. It's funny that he's talking about left-wing extremists like Sam Cedar, the guy that he normally has collaborated with in the past, the guy who has a massive amount of audience overlap and they cross promote shit like that. Like, what the hell? What are you talking about? Everyone has disagreed with Anna on this on the broader left because Anna was so wrong, it wasn't even funny. It was so wrong, people couldn't even believe that she was saying it because her opinion was so stupidly formed. She couldn't even represent, she couldn't even formulate the argument that she was supposedly arguing against. She bungled the argument on a basic level and then proceeded to double down and misrepresent the argument. Known leftist extremist, Sam Cedar. Known leftist extremist, your former employees who you parted with on good terms. There is absolutely no question about who started this. Everyone felt like they had to do a video explaining how they're more holy than us when no real voters on the left agree with you at all. Please don't pretend now that we're the ones making a big deal about it. 
And then Emma says, the repeated emphasis and reaction have been on social media. I can't speak to the segments you guys have done on the show. I'm not trying to be pure. I'm engaging with you even though it's uncomfortable for me because I love you guys and I want TYT to be on the right side here. Now, are you guys ready to see this fucking bitch behavior? The reason why, it's also really funny. Uh, I shouldn't get into this. We'll get into this in a second. Jenk, good news, we are on the right side. Mission accomplished. Now let me talk to you in a patronizing way about all of your opinions I need to correct. Okay, guys, something you guys should know about Jenk. Jenk, uh, Jenk tried to run for office. A lot of people don't know this. Jenk tried to run for office in California and he got blown the fuck out. And do you wanna know why he got blown the fuck out? He got blown the fuck out because there were videos of him literally condescending to everybody else in a room that were so insufferable that even other leftists had to dis disavow him because he was so interpersonally insufferable uh, because he went and attacked random, random other lefties and liberals over the most deranged bullshit. In fact, if I remember correctly, he even went after another uh, uh, another liberal who he, who was running against him after uh, she had uh, revenge porn posted about her. Cenk is one of the most insufferable, condescending people you can imagine, and the literal people rejected him. This motherfucker thinks he's like a winner because he has a YouTube show, and then he talks big about electoral politics, but he got blown the fuck out! He was so unlikable! He's the most miserable person. If you watch Jink for five minutes, all the dude does is fucking snark. That's all he's got in his bag. And everybody knows that the only person who's ever been truly liked by the left was Anna, because Anna was, at least prior to this particular arc, significantly more left than Jink. Jenk has always been uh, a, a albatross around TYT's neck to anyone other than neoliberal fucking ghouls who want to think that they're slightly more left than uh, uh, Ronald Reagan. Anna Kasparian bungled the argument. She completely bungled even, a, even her misrepresentation of the argument, and she got roasted for it. Here we go. Emma, we love you too. We'll get beyond this disagreement in a second, but in this case, you guys made a giant mountain out of the smallest molehill. Then after all these videos correcting us, I'm surprised you guys think we were supposed to find that friendly and awesome. Do you guys remember? We watched Sam Cedar and Emma Viglin talking about Anna Kasparian. And also, just remember that before your very eyes, the entire reason why I took the time to go through the tweets here was to show Anna Kasparian went after Olay for, for out of nowhere. Anna Kasparian tweeted this out of nowhere. Anna Kasparian has doubled down for now over two weeks for no real reason. Anna Kasparian went after Olay out of nowhere. And guess what? Unfortunately, it gets even worse for the stupid gaslighting liar that is Jenk. Also, by the way, it's very funny to me um, that they're like, they try to frame everyone as like trying to clout shark off of their fucking channel. Nobody tries to clout shark off that channel. They don't have any content. If they don't bring in, bring on other leftists, their show is just a pile of fucking ads and jank bloviating for hours on end. Do, have you guys ever actually tried to watch TYT? It's fucking unwatchable. It is ad after ad after donation plea after donation plea. Can you guys imagine if every 10 minutes of my show I was asking you for donations. By the way, if you're enjoying this show, you should press subscribe and like, and you should consider throwing a few dollars towards Demon Mama, who actually keeps you entertained during her shows instead of running ads. You hear that? What just came from my mouth? That's the first fucking ad that I've run in this entire segment. I've been going for like 30 minutes, and you haven't had to hear a single ad, and all I asked for was a subscribe and a like. Now imagine that three times every 10 minutes, if every single five fucking seconds on the show, I was going, uh, fucking give us some money because we're the only real lefties around and while everybody else is making giant molehills out of it. So fucking annoying. It's actually hilarious that this is the stance that Jenk goes for. I mean, it's predictable from Jenk, but honestly, it's Anna Kasparian that most people are fucking disappointed in because Anna Kasparian is being so unbelievably cringe that most people who all, um, 
who all uh, uh, respected her quite a lot, uh, uh, basically are just like, how can you be so dumb? So dumb as to literally contradict your own goddamn opinion. But guess what? We got some clips here. We got some clips. Let's take a look. Let's take a look at what was said on the show. Okay? Because that was just what happened on social media. Let's take a look at what they said on their show. To be honest, I just don't really care to like collaborate with any other leftist ever again at this point. Yeah, no, that's I where no, that's no. where I'm at. Because they come on the show, they build a name for themselves, and then they build a bigger name for themselves, trashing us as if they don't know who we are. As if they haven't worked with us. Remember, this was triggered because of that clip that we watched of Olay earlier. Olay said I think people were being were coddling her. She came out of nowhere with this. We just spent the last hour say defending her instead of actually critiquing what she said. I think you all are being you aren't being fair and we should critique her words. After explicitly saying like I don't have a personal problem with Anna, I just think what she said was wrong. This is what is prompted. Let's watch that again. Let's listen to this again, okay? Real quick. After that to Genius. be honest, I just don't really care to like collaborate with any other leftist ever again at this point. Yeah, no, that's where, no, that's no. where I'm at because they come on the show, they build a name for themselves, and then they build a bigger name for themselves, trashing us as if they don't know who we are, as if they haven't worked with us, they don't know what our actual political values are. So I just, I, I don't, Jake, I never want to talk about them again. I never want to address them again. It's a waste of time. There's important stuff going on in the country. Our personal drama with a bunch of leftists on Twitter doesn't matter. All right. Blah, 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 blah. Blubbering. B blubbering. Remember how I said that the behavior was like that of literal babies? That is uh, the most blubbering, hyper fragile, sensitive bullshit. I won't work with the left anymore. You, when people were joking, people made jokes about like the incoming how I left the left arc. When you say I ref I don't want to talk to any fucking leftists anymore. I'm not going to do it anymore. You're all just using me. It really does come off as very uh, Dave Rubin-esque. It really does come off as very how I left the left. Just pathetic, absolutely pathetic. All right, let's see the next clip, because we got another one here. Comes out and does this, here I'll name a name, Lance from the Serps. He's on here all the time on the power panel, right? And he comes out and does this uh, like video about how he's so correct and <laughs> oh yeah, the young Turks, <laughs> correct? Damn, sick, sick Lance impersonation. That's exactly how, that's, that's how Lance acts, guys. That's that's a very good impersonation of Lance, in my opinion. No, Lance, you're not goddamn correct. Nobody elected you. The polling. Nobody elected you, you fucking idiot. Dude, you got fucking rejected. You actually ran for office and you didn't get elected. Who the fuck are you to talk? Bro, you got fucking rejected by the literal people of America and you scurried back to your fucking Twitter show. Holy shit. Shows no one agrees with you. Your 12 buddies online, I don't care. The 12 buddies that you are devoting your massive show right now to, your limited time on one of the biggest left leaning shows on the internet, you're so mad about those 12 buddies that you're calling out somebody who you just admitted regularly collaborates with you and gives you content. Man, the Young Turk sucks so much ass. Uh, it, it makes complete sense that they have to fill their show with 99% ads to make a profit. Okay. And say, oh yeah, I'm not. He's, uh, I'm 100. percent He's 99.95 percent correct. Oh, I'm gonna correct him. No, 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 no. So don't look. You want to say, hey, I don't agree with you. God bless. You want to say, Jake, you shouldn't say anything back because you're being rude. Come on, brother. Or says, I don't know I, I where. Here, I'll name a name. I'm sorry. Hold on. I want to see that in context. Hold on, let me just see if we can get this in context. I want to watch this whole bit if we can get it. For mine, because Wait, you think- my video. Hold on, let's see. This is Paul Bureau approved. You wrote a very long message about how you disagree with me, and, and Shane uh, wrote a similar one that I read. So I'll just say this, okay, I love you, and it's okay, and if you disagree, it's okay. If you want to leave, that's okay, okay? Um, thank you for being a member all this time, I appreciate it. And 
But what you're, in my opinion, what you're misunderstanding is, and what you have maybe you didn't see is, so all this kerfuffle starts with a simple tweet, and then a simple tweet that is completely bungled, has no real reason, and counteracts left left wing messaging, genuine left wing messaging on both trans issues and abortion. Just so we know, this is not like a major, like like they're playing the victim. Jenk, as always, is playing a giant baby victim. Oh, I'm the birthday boy. Don't hit me. I'm the birthday boy. Anna is a professional. Her, she presents herself as a professional political representative and a professional advocate for the left. And her opinion was not only wrong, but was counter to the argument that she herself has made in the past, as is the video that we saw in the past. Do not be fooled by Jenks bullshit, okay? We all saw the clip, we all looked at the tweets, we all saw how Anna was reacting. There was no, but just a widow birthday boy. Oh, Anna didn't do anything wrong. Anna made a stupid argument and was told very gently by every single person in this face in this space almost like con like 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 embarrassingly gently by every single person in these spaces every single major figure in these spaces that how she was wrong and they were remarkably careful because they didn't want to hurt her feelings and still she shattered like a fucking tiny piece of uh, like a tiny teacup She's a journalism teacher, that's even worse. And at least half a dozen videos from other progressives or leftists online, all attacking us and calling us all sorts of names. So maybe you don't see that, so you think like, well, what is Jenk so upset about, right? So they call us all these uh, Remember, he's mad about in his own words, as he says this, just remember, in his own words, it's 12 meaningless people on Twitter that he's super mad about right now. Just recognize how fucking blisteringly stupid Jenk actually is. Oh, it's 12 people, but I'm gonna cry about it for literal, for multiple minutes on my show. And they, they feel super proud about it, like, huh, we are more pure. So then I fight back on Twitter, and then all of a sudden they're like, how could you insult us? We were just, all we were doing was punching you in the face. No, 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 that's a- So, <laughs> Apparently, 12 people being mad at him on Twitter is the equivalent of punching him in the face. Do you hear, like, this guy literally, he's he's pulling like a, like a fucking Donald Trump bit here. Unbelievable. Apparently, uh, when you say stupid shit on the internet and people say you're being dumb about it, that's being punched in the face. Just listen to how he's literally birthday boying right now. That is literally what he's doing right-wing position you punch then you got to expect that I'm gonna counter right I don't mean you kid tested <laughs> I mean for folks who are out there here I'll name a name Lance from the Serbs he's on here all the time on the power panel right and he comes out and does this uh, like video about how he's so correct and <laughs> oh yeah the young Turks <laughs> correct no Lance you're not goddamn correct nobody elected you the polling shows no one agrees with you your 12 buddies online I don't care, okay? And say, oh yeah, I'm not. 12 buddies. He's, uh, I'm 100%, he's 99.95% correct. Oh, I'm gonna correct him. No, 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 no. So don't, look, you wanna say, hey, I don't agree with you? God bless. You wanna say, Jenk, you shouldn't say anything back because you're being rude? Come on, brother, or Listen, sister, I, I don't know I what you're I just gotta be honest, is. I just don't. Oh my God. Come on, brother or sister. To, did he just try to do like a, a like a little right wing? Like, did I hear that right? About about Lance, somebody who he claims he's like he 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 he's calling out Lance by name, and he tries to do the little fucking Republican. Like, I don't know. I don't. I don't want to assume your gender. Oh my god! What a fucking loser! What a fucking You're loser! Being rude. Come on, brother, or sister, I don't know what you're doing. I just gotta be genius. honest, I just don't really care to like collaborate with any other leftist ever again at this point. Yeah, no, that's I, where, I, no, that's no. where I'm at. Because they come on the show, they build a name for themselves, and then they build a bigger name for themselves, trashing us as if they don't know who we are. As if they haven't worked with us, they don't know what our actual political values are. 
So I just, I, I don't, Jank, I never. But yeah, remember, Jank is the uh, Jank, Jank is the pillar of charisma who wins over everybody except for apparently the voters when he got fucking roundly rejected. Can we look up what is a? Uh, hold on. Let's see. I want to see if we can get. Uh, I want to see if we can get his uh, his election results. Oh, he didn't even, he didn't even register. Oh my God, did he get fucking blown? Oh, oops. Oh, oops. Bro, you got 6.6% .6 of the vote, of the vote? Dude, you got fucking obliterated by everyone. You, you barely squeaked into fourth place a whopping 10,000 votes, dude. The, the god of charisma who has his finger on the pulse of the people. I never want to talk about them again. I never want to address them again. It's a waste of time. There's important stuff going on in the country. Our personal drama with a bunch of leftists on Twitter doesn't matter. All right, last thing I'm gonna- Then why do you keep revisiting it? If you're, if, if this issue doesn't matter, if people weren't correct, what this is, everybody, what you are witnessing is a colossal amount of cope that Anna Kasparian and especially Cenk, but everybody already knew that Cenk was a little fucking whiny bitch baby who can't even handle the tiniest bit of pushback without fucking freaking the fuck out and screaming at people because he has like anger issues. Uh, but what this has revealed is that Anna Kasparian is beyond fragile and that despite the fact that she commands an unbelievably large platform comparatively, uh, that she can't even handle the most minimal pushback when she does an oopsie doopsie and directly contradicts her Herself, in addition to completely bungling the point that she's trying to make just just talk about uh i don't know i i, I want to be charitable and say that it's a fall off because i do think that like um anna kasparian uh, I've spoken very highly of Anna kasparian in the past i think that Anna kasparian has been very based on a number of things but um but like this arc is pathetic yeah i guess it's fair to say it's a fall off holy shit Let's see, let's see what else they have to say. Say on it because you brought it up is that I'm not, I'm not the kind of guy to back down. And just constantly saying that you are. As you, you say, as you're shitting your pants, I'm not gonna back down. As, you're, as your pants literally load up with shit, I won't back down. I, I will never back down as your pants start to fall down from your waistband because you're filling it with so much shit. Correct that I am incorrect is not 1% persuasive, not 1%. So sorry, that's my real opinions. Oh, I wonder, I wonder, I wonder if he, uh, I wonder if he ever watched Anna Kasparian's previous uh, clip. Oh wait, he was there for that. He was there for when Anna Kasparian was making the exact same arguments that were being made about uh, 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 the exact type of uh, arguments that were being made towards Anna Kasparian when she said a stupid, bad, wrong, and idiotic opinion. Holy shit. They're entering their own Jimmy Dore arc. I don't know if I'd go that far. Jimmy Dore is still uh, is, is phenomenally stupid and dishonest. Uh, but I will say, I wanted, to, I wanted to, to, to point out two other little things, okay? First of all, Anna Kasparian, someone asked Anna Kant's Kasparian, has anyone called you a birthing person, anyone at all? And then Anna Kasparian's response was, yes, Tyler, I live in California. Which is one of the most fucking bazinga, 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 bazinga moments, fucking bazinga ass b -b 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 -bazinga. moment that you can possibly fucking imagine. Uh just resorting to California jokes, literally just breaking out the fucking Ben Garrison there. A great way to convince people that you're not a, uh, that you're not a, a Republican. Also, I wanted to give a couple, a little bit more credit to, uh, um, old, uh, to Ole real quick, okay? Here, let's just read a little bit of what, what Ole had to say to this, okay? Ole says, 
It says a lot to me that I host a show with five white people who express the same sentiments as me, but the Young Turks chose to only attack me until my co-hosts rightfully defended me, and now they're attacking them. What is the message there? Did they step out of line by defending the black woman? Media works by shows reaching out to people who have followings they want to capitalize on. If a co-host of mine has ever appeared on the Young Turks, it's because the Young Turks requested their presence. It's absolutely absurd for them to attack us and claim that we're the ones clout chasing. It's obviously the other way around. And Olay is just right. That is literally what shows like the Turks, uh, uh, the Young Turks, uh, that's how they make their show. You have to reach out to people. You don't just like, people don't just get to scroll up and apply and be like, hi, I let me in now. No, their show is a two person show. It's run by and produced by two people. Maybe they have another producer in the background. I don't know for sure. But it's like, how much more right can you get? But it doesn't end there. It's wild when you consider the fact that she asked me to appear on TYT because everyone else wasn't nice enough to them when she started to pivot to being the mayors of Copaganda. Real quick, just to be clear, that was Anna Kasparian's last uh, big incident. This was the uh, anti-prison abolition, anti-defunding the police one where Anna Kasparian was, tweet was tweeting about how scary homeless people are and how uh, she thinks that we actually need more police to help keep those homeless people in line. Uh, that was Anna's second to most recent uh, uh, fiasco. Let's continue. Just like she attacked me out of the blue in order to make her name trend, she needs to be serious here. This is this is a thing they do. They start fights and create controversy, hoping it makes people tune into their show where they pretend to casually address their made up issue. Stop using me for engagement. Don't don't sub me. Don't at me because I'm nice to everyone until they play with me. Also, Jenk disrespected me publicly on the show. And when the public opinion wasn't in his favor, he DM me trying to insist he did it because he knew I could handle it. And I was nice enough to never publicly put them on blast. So they need to stop running with this fake ass narrative that anyone ever disrespected them or used them for clout when it's the other way around. Not to mention the fact that I host a show uh, with five other people who shared the same thoughts and criticisms of their actions, yet they have chosen only to publicly attack and disrespect my black ass. How convenient. Absolutely destroyed. Obliterated with facts and logic, and all that they can respond, all that Anna Kasparian and fucking Jake can do is bitch and whine, is cry about how, ooh, the 12 people that I don't care about are being so mean, they were punching me in the face with their opinions. Just the most base level manipulation that doesn't work on fucking anyone. They got wrecked in the arena of ideas, and it's one of the most embarrassing things I've ever had to see. I've ever had to see. Massive credit to Olay uh, for speaking the absolute truth here. Everyone on the goddamn planet, every single person who saw all of these other content creators bending over absolute backwards. Uh, in order to uh, in order to be kind to Anna Kasparian when Anna Kasparian was so wrong. Could you do a shout out to o o uh, to Oli Oliemi's channel? Absolutely, everybody in chat. Um, uh, there's a link dropped right here if you all want to follow Oliemi. Uh, she just got in start got started out uh, started out on YouTube. Oh my God, I'm stumbling over my words. Uh, so go ahead and and shoot a shoot a follow over to Olay. Uh, I'm more than happy uh, to, to shout out her channel. It looks like she has a pretty big following elsewhere, but that she's just getting started out on YouTube. So uh, if you all head over there, send some love from the imps. Remember, the imps raid with love and only with love. So shoot on over there, uh, shoot a uh, subscribe, etc. <laughs> oh my God. Do not call Anna Kasparian a menstruator. She's a woman straighter. That is literally that that's the tier of argument that's going on uh, here. <laughs> oh my god. It's it's actually shocking. <laughs> oh, 
Oh my god. I'm just sorry. I'm looking at some of the comments here and it's hilarious. She's just getting dunked on. She's getting dunked on by everybody and fairly so. Again, she brought this back up. I also made a tweet about this, which of course I'm going to share because I think I'm proud of this. Trans woman tweets suboptimally worded opinion once, career damaged, weeks of harassment, removal from social groups. Liberal cis woman reporter with a massive platform misrepresents a basic abortion and trans rights position for literal weeks and gets a light scolding from friends. Uh, ain't that the fucking truth? Ain't that the fucking truth? By the way, if you want to boost that tweet, bam, there you go. Go ahead, give it some fucking love. It's actually wild though. The worst, the, the, uh, uh, the worst thing about this shit, uh, is just, uh, how it's inevitably, it, 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 because of the stupidity and the doubling down, because even, even the most simple, uh, 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 uh like, uh, uh, arguments being made towards, uh, towards Anna, again, like I said, uh, it, it was, we can, I just, I can go back through. Do we need to go back and look at the tweets and how stupid her argument was? Again, she herself knows she did, she had a clip just here. We just watched the clip. She knows that her argument was wrong. She literally called Republicans who were making her argument from a few weeks ago. She called them stupid grifters. Who's the stupid grifter? The unfortunate thing is that this indicates a direction that, that Anna Kasparian intends to go in for the near future, which is that she's convinced herself that she's the ultimate victim now. Can you even explain what the best faith interpretation of her argument uh, and the turf argument against people or academic medical journalists not using inclusive language? Yes, of course I can. Let me do that real quick, just as a final measure of as good faith as possible, even though I'm just the goofball who says funny things on the internet, okay? The argument she's trying to make is that, uh, is that Cl using terms like birthing person or you or uh, some person with a uterus uh, boils people down to their reproductive function. That is the argument. The argument is this is dehumanizing because you're referring to me, a woman, as a birthing person or as a person with a uterus. That's the argument. However, it is severely flawed on a very basic level because of course, no one at all, except for maybe somebody who truly doesn't know what they're talking about, only a absolute fool would ever argue that the word woman uh, in all contexts should be replaced with person with a uterus. They're not, there is no one arguing for that. That is not where these terms come in. These terms have nothing to do with replacing the word woman. In fact, um, the, the, she's representing the opposite. She's saying that women are people with uteruses, which does boil down the term woman to reproductive function. The other thing is saying, wait a minute, hold on a second. There are people who can have babies. There are people with uteruses who aren't women. The the position that she is trying to argue against is the position that is saying woman does not mean reproductive function. So do you see why I said it's unbelievably uh, uh, bungled? There are intersex people, non-binary people. There are trans men. All of those are people who might belong to the category of people with a uterus, of people who uh, can give birth, of people who can menstruate. There are all kinds of people who belong to that category. The, arg she's, the argument that her and TERFs make is a bad faith. It is a misrepresentation of what is being said. It is a comical misrepresentation of what is being said. No one is arguing that, the, that, that women all need to be replaced with birthing person. Instead, it is saying women should not mean people who give birth. Instead, we should talk about people who give birth because not all women give birth. It really is that simple. This is why it's so frustrating. It's a, and again, you know what? No, you know what? Let's just do it. I'm sorry. Let's just, let's just do it. Hold on. It, we're, we're gonna do it again. I'm just gonna play it again. I'll let, I'll let, 
Here we go. Let's just let her talk. Let's let Anna explain the difference. Let's let Anna do it's it. It's bad faith. They know. They know there's a difference between gender and sex. They know that it is very possible for someone to be born a biological male or, or a biological female, but in terms of gender identify differently as a male or non-binary, but they still have the biological capacity, the physical capacity to get pregnant. Mm -hmm. So that's why the language, the rhetoric is inclusive to include those people. It is not a big deal, but they make it a big deal. They manufacture it into a big deal because that's all Republicans are. That's all they have, this is all they do. Endless bad faith arguments meant to fear monger and direct hatred and fear toward other Americans, typically powerless Americans, because it's bad faith. This is all Anna Kasparian and the Young Turks do. Woo, boy. Okay, I also, I'm curious now, okay? This is, I don't know what this is. Hold on, I gotta see this, I gotta see this. I don't know what this is, this was posted by Olay. Olay posted this and says, don't you dare call a her a birthing person, but she'll gladly call you the end. Words to hear, but we're my job. He only shot run. Nigga, hear that. Okay, so they're like, all right, all right, you cover that Jerry Rice look. Yeah. Whatever, your head. He canceled his weekend at Dad Ranch. Words to hear, but I don't know, everybody. Honestly, uh, I think the uh, I think the Anna Kasparian fragility arc is pathetic, uh, and honestly, I think that Jenk is rubbing off on her in the worst possible way, because that is some cringe. Okay, everybody. Cringe as fuck. Well, anybody, anyway, everyone, just remember, it's definitely everyone who pointed out correctly that Anna Kasparian's argument was bad uh, that are helping, uh, uh, that are helping uh, the right, and definitely not Anna Kasparian and Jenk. Jenk, who is going on the timeline to screech about how the leftist extremists are destroying America and ruining the chances for the Democratic Party, while also deflating his own argument by citing statistics that show that actually no, um, the le leftist extremists aren't ruining the electoral chances of the Democratic Party. Oh my God. I don't think they understand how unpopular their take is. They don't. Or, well, obviously, to a certain degree, Anna Kasparian does. It is just doubling down. But um, the reason their take is so unpopular is because it's extremely straightforward and easy to understand. Only, as Anna Kasparian said, only literal idiot grifters uh, who are trying to push a political agenda do not recognize the fact that sex and gender are different, that most people have a grasp of that, but more so that this language isn't about replacing every single instance of the word woman, but instead in, in, uh, but instead is literally about what she claims to want to care about. What Anna claims that she cares about is women not being boiled down to reproductive function. And this language does that. The language of saying people who can give birth, people who can menstruate, people with uteruses disentangles the word woman from being 100% tied to reproductive function. You know who uses woman interchangeably with reproductive function? Fucking Republicans. Republicans. Republicans go, well, if you don't got a pussy, then you ain't a woman. If you're, if you can't have a baby, well, then you ain't a woman. And then Anna Kasparian's like, hell yeah. And again, I do have to say that I agree with Gay Fesh to a certain degree, which is that, uh, she knows what she's doing. She's not fucking stupid. She's been running one of these. She's, like I said, she's got a huge platform. She's a public professional uh, who claims to be a left-wing advocate. And she has made the opposite argument to what she's making now many times in the past. She is simply being stubborn and foolish. That's it. It's, it, it is a, it, it is, it is doubling down. It is pride. It is, 
a, 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 a malicious arrogance. Also, I want to do one final thing to finally wrap off this. Um, to finally wrap off this segment, I just want to point something out that I think was funny. Here is uh, Anna Kasparian's very good friend, Candace Owens. Good for you, referring to Anna Kasparian. Good for J.K. Rowling and Riley Gaines. What could be more misogynistic than men who dress as women demanding that real women stop existing to accommodate their dysphoria? I have virtually nothing in common with Anna Kasparian, but we both are women. So if that doesn't tell you right off the bat exactly where her rhetoric is being heard and who is benefiting from her rhetoric, and just remember, we just looked at Chank saying, oh, you guys are helping the right, while Candace Owen is it literally uses uh, to great success, mind you, to great success, uses uh, Anna Kasparian's tweet to promote raw transphobic propaganda. Uh, Biceps and Bikinis points out, it's also amazing that this ends up going back onto trans women rather than trans men. Yeah, I I know. It's because trans women are the are what the, the, the right wing uses for disgust factor. Always, always. It will, it is, that is, we, trans women are who they use as the, uh, 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 as the, the spearhead. I, I've said this a million times. Trans women uh, are benefit uh, from the, or I should say benefit, they suffer from the curse of visibility. Trans women, uh, more people know about trans women, which means that the right is always obsessed with trans women. Disgusting trans women. Even though this is an issue that is arguably more important to trans men and non-binary people. Someone asked me today why, tr this is from Candace Owens again. Someone asked me today why trans men are not being promoted like trans women are, because men would never tolerate such stupidity. Frankly, only women could be emotional and irrational enough to have allowed transgenderism to infiltrate our sp spaces. We feel bad for, and then she drops the T-slur. That was from like just a few days ago. But hey, there you go. Candace Owens is the biggest fucking fraud ever. A completely and utterly eclipsed person, a hollow of a human being. There is nothing inside of Candace Owens' soul except for grift. That is it. Literally nothing. She's the most self-hating person I've ever seen on the planet. It's pathetic. Anyway, if you enjoyed uh, our, uh, our uh, takedown of Anna Kasparian, our critique of Anna Kasparian, uh, uh, then please slap subscribe to the channel. Slap that like button. We would love to have you back um, once again in the future because I do this kind of stuff all the time. Uh, unlike Anna Kasparian, I don't have the arrogance to try and sell myself as some kind of beacon of journalism or some other fucking bullshit when in reality I'm just a fucking, uh, uh, what is her show? An advertisement platform? Half their show is ad runs? ad run after ad run, ads plastered all over the screen, asking for more donations, asking for more money. No, when you watch my show, you get an ask for a subscription and an ask for a like, and maybe once in a while, I ask for your tips and donations because this is genuinely viewer-supported media. And you always have a good time when you watch Demon Mama.